Now we're going to have a look at how to edit fills. We're not going to look at creating fills just yet, but you can look at one of my other videos to look at how to create a fill. But how do we edit a fill? Let's say, for instance, we weren't really happy with the uh, the level of detail that we had with this brick. Or let's say it was in the wrong place or maybe in the wrong direction. How could we fix that? If I select a particular fill and go into the settings in the info box, we have three, four different, in this case, construction methods of how we're going to draw. One, two, three. When we click off, let's go this way, um, we can draw a construction method which is relevant to the project origin. What does that mean? If I zoom out, There is a spot here which is our project origin. That, that means everything is zero, zero. So all of the lines or the beginning of the fill relates to this, which essentially means that all of our fills, if they relate to the project origin, will all seem like they all join up because they're relating to one particular unified point. What's the other options? The other ways of drawing is to have a related to the fill origin. Now to do this, we essentially create our own origin, which means we take this point and we drag it around, and that's where our fill starts from. Now depending on what sort of fill it is, that might not make a lot of sense as a brick hatch. But it makes a lot of sense if we're doing something like a floor tile, perhaps. So let's draw a, a big floor in this case. Um, Let's draw it three meters by three meters. Now, what sort of object might we want here? Let's make it out of colored tiles. Not very helpful. ceramic tiles, let's use that. Okay, so with a ceramic tile, if we were doing a, a tile set out, say for instance we were drawing a bathroom, we'd want to use this fill origin so that we could determine that we're setting our tile to start in the corner, the corner of the room, which would mean that we're setting it out from a particular point. Now what's the other ways of changing this? Let's undo that. This is our fill origin. Now this also means we can change the rotation. So if I grab the other end, it means I can turn that to a different angle. Let's turn on my grid lines. And so I can snap it to 45 degrees. And that will change the orientation of my fill. So that's to fill origin. And then we have this one here which is distorted fill. Now distorted fill will take the way it's currently at. And it can do two things. It can change the scale. We can take these two arms and we can shorten their length, therefore distorting our fill. Or what we can also do is distort it on an angle as well. Now this is really good if we're trying to change an instance of one particular hatch. Now why would we want to do that? Let's say for instance we're trying to make timber, timber panelling maybe look realistic. I'm not sure if there is a very good timber fill panel in here, but let's have a quick look. Not a very good one. So let's just use wood. Let's see what that's like. So we see that wood is actually just very straight. It's not a, a very nice material. But let's say we wanted this to make it look a little bit more realistic. So we could drag some copies of this. Let's just drag multiple copies right now. Now when we have something that we want to see, in this case, in elevation, if all the hatching lines up, it doesn't look very realistic. So what we can do here is change either the orientation of the fill, and that will make a slight variation to make it look a, maybe a bit more realistic. So now we're getting the grain, if you like, running in different orientations. Or what we could also do is to change it to distorted fill, which would mean that we could again change the orientation, but we could also reduce the scale or increase the scale, and that would make it look like the 
hatches further apart or closer together. So this gives us a lot of options. Now for such a simple shape as a line, it's not going to give us a lot of effect, but when we're using a much more complicated fill type, let's find one of those. Uh, concrete lightweight's not too bad. We can see that we're getting some different shapes and some different distortion happening here because of the way that we are working. Let's just grab another one here. Do it a different way this time. Just to get some real difference happening. There you go. So that's how we can change the situation of fills. Now, what other types of fills do we have? Let's draw a circle. Uh, let's make a smaller circle. Now, this might not be for drafting, but we have... Not in this standard one, I don't. Let's have a look in here. Drafting fills, please. Okay. When we're using drafting fills, we can also use things like linear gradient or radial gradient. And this allows us to have a distortion of color, such we might do in Photoshop. Now, how am I going to define a fill to a circle? That would be very hard if it wasn't for our magic wand. Thankfully, we have that to our disposal because we've already got a shape. So I can magic wand inside our shape, and that will define my circle. Now, it looks very blue. We can't see any of this light blue or white at all. That's because it will automatically assign the, the gradient, and then we can define it ourselves by stretching this line. Now, in this case, the color variation isn't huge, and you'll note that if I shorten it too much, we'll see that it's only changing the color between the lines that we have. So we could take that definition past or short, and of course we can at any point change the, the colors that we're using to define this as well. Mm. And this is a great way to add uh, presentation quality to our plans, elevations, details perhaps. Maybe if you're trying to represent a pool with water or you're trying to represent glass, this can be a very clever way of working. And uh, it's really just up to your imagination what you could do with it. What else can we do? We've got the radiant or radial gradient fill. In this case, it's a similar idea. And all we're doing is reducing the two circles here. And they're defining the extent of the color. Now, we can move the center as well and that will shift how that works. So that's a little bit about fills.